All right, we've got some challenges ahead. We kind of know what the topic areas are based on the astrology. We're looking at Mercury aspects. We're looking at Venus aspects. We're probably the hardest hit. So we're looking at communication, the way we relate, possibly changes in relationships. But we're going to really get down to the nuts and bolts here. Um, some of you might ask, Chris, do you ever have anything positive to say? And the answer is yes. Every week, if you'd stay long enough for the solution, that's where the positive material is. Because you can't always control the outside events and make them all positive. Um, the, the, the secret to life is in your reactions. And so when you get the negative thing from the external world, you can respond to it negatively or you can respond to it positively. And that's why the positive parts are all in the solution. That's at the end of the videos. What we do in the influence is just give you hopefully accurate, accurate in terms of what most people are going to feel and experience this week. And this week it looks like challenges. Um, the I Ching says hesitation and hindrance with a lot of Mercury alignments. That's why we have the blue circle because Mercury has an in conjunct to Pluto and in conjunct to Neptune and a square to Mars. And then right after all this uh, is going to start to uh, slow down. It's already slowing down this week, but we'll end up going station and retrograde. Turn my volume button up here. Uh, and uh, what's not depicted here then is the Venus aspect. She's got some challenges too. Venus square Uranus, Venus in conjunct Saturn, some male maleficence in uh, areas of relationship and the way we connect and peace and harmony. So which one's worse? I'm going to say Mercury. Uh, especially since the dream bot is um, showing some signs. Now, this could be representative of the old outage, the outage, not the old, uh, the previous outage. This could be day residue, or it could be signifying another one. Could be both. Uh, but number one word is reset. Uh, really looking forward to showing you this run. Uh, but um, that signifies Mercury for the internet and the connectivity. We have Uranus aspects are, Uranus represents the technology, the backbone of the internet, um, the technology and how it all connects. But the Mercury aspect is the information flow from one person to another. That is Mercury. And so it takes both of those. Uh, I suppose we can throw Venus in there too, because it's how we relate to each other each other. So uh, we have Mercury, Venus, and Uranus as very key components of this week's alignments, as you're going to see. So I think I covered all those. We have the last quarter moon as well. So challenges ahead. Everybody ready to go? Let's do this. We had a three-way tie for our best comment, so shout out to Sean Nelson, our plant lady, John Baxter, and Toth Mark. All three of you, big congratulations and standing ovation. And if you haven't already, go down to the comments and pick your favorite comment. That's how this works. Ideally, you'd also lay down another comment, but that's not required. At least go to the other comments and and find the one that you like the most okay thank you that really helps our system here so that we can find the best comment all right let me show you the dream bot here we are all right ready reset number one word and okay so uh, first of all this run to me, when I first saw it, um, 100 and, well, 200% confirms 
that the dream bot is a thing. It's like it, it's reading accurately. Um, so in one regard, we're looking at day residue. In other words, people are dreaming about the event that happened. I don't, I can't remember how long ago, what, 10 days ago or whatever. It was an internet outage. Uh, not everybody was affected, but a huge amount of people were around the world. Um, then other people are talking about the great reset. So it's kind of like a double meaning, but here's the deal. The words reset and backup. I looked in the, in the database all the way back have never ever been in the dreams, maybe just a spike of one here and there, but now we're looking at a huge amount of hits. So people are using the words backup and reset in their dreams for the first time in history in dream by history. And so that is absolutely huge. Um, I, okay. So the way that dream bot works is that it, it does, it reads people's dreams. The way dreams work is they can be day residue, just a regurgitation of an event that's already happened. That, that world, uh, internet outage was a huge uh, news, so that makes sense. Uh, that could that could be it. We we're, we're done talking, but it could also be predictive of something coming in the future. Where I'm open to that. Um, I can't make that prediction just based on this alone. I have to have other things. Uh, one of them being intentional dreams before I can actually make a prediction on it. So. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is just past or also future, but we know it is related to the past because these all these red arrows are basically words indicating connectivity, such as reset, backup, enter, email, code, check, link, agreement, like your signed agreement that nobody ever reads. They just say, okay. Yeah, or, or else you don't get to use your phone or else you don't, don't get to use the email provider. Um, number, log, use, comments, app, and up. So here's a neat thing is that there aren't really any downwards like, hey, the internet crashed. Um, just the, the two words, uh, reset. And backup, those are the only kind of worrisome words, but they're not even, they're kind of the positive version of it. Because if everything crashed and I brought my backup up successfully, well, that's a good thing, even though it was a bad event. So it's like the good part of a bad event. And the word up is very positive. So I'm just saying it's it's just in general, internet connectivity I do find it interesting that the reset word is the for the first time in dream by history is way up there in in terms of hits. Is that the great reset? And some people say that includes an internet down. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is uh you guys are able to read this as well. You can make your interpretations. Big picture in the astrology. How did you like your second Capricorn moon? Full moon. All you uh, Capricorns out there or Capricorn moons. How'd you guys like your moon? It has to be exciting. And rarely do we get that opportunity for any of the signs. Next up is going to be a new moon in Leo, but not this surf week. We're right in between, so we're last quarter moon. Current energy window is a, kind of a short, uh, what, about a week, week and a half, uh, Leadership Academy. This is where we really identify uh, the downsides or the shadow sides of leadership. We find bad leadership. We see the rise of good leadership, uh, training, training new leadership people. We're seeing this all in the news. I mean, just it's amazing to me to see how many line and headlines are 
representing this energy window. All right, here's Mercury. Mercury is going to go into Virgo. And uh, look at this, this uh, 27, 27, 27. This is uh, Mercury and Venus. Two of these are Venus, Venus square Uranus, uh, exact on the 27th. Wait, nope, sorry, wrong, wrong line. It's uh, v, uh, Venus in conjunct Saturn. And then Mercury in conjunct Pluto goes exact on the 27th, so the exact same day. So these in conjuncts go exact. Here's your uh, energy chart for the week. It's just pretty much high. And these are challenges. Remember, this line represents challenges ahead. Um, let me delete this zero. Um, but the first part is more along the lines of um, communication, like Mercury things, Mer uh, communication, uh, traffic, uh, traveling, short-term travel, and um, thoughts, how you think. And then the last part is more associated with Venus, Venus square Uranus, as it takes, starts taking over, which is uh, more relational, relational changes relational insights, um, how we relate to each other, all those things become well, much more difficult because of the square. All right, Thursday, the 25th. Look at all this mess. Let's start to make sense of it. First, go to the sun. The sun is in Leo. Three degrees Leo. Leo has a trine to the fire moon, Aries moon. So right there's uh, decent. Okay. We have, we have lots of lines over here. These are not tight alignments. The tightest alignment happens to be Mercury square Mars. And Mercury has, I'm sorry, Mercury in conjunct Pluto, much tighter. There we go. That's uh, within a degree. The reason why we have this chart and this snapshot is because Mercury is at zero degrees Virgo. So it has just crested out of Leo into Virgo at 541 p.m. Daylight savings time. Mercury returns home to Virgo, but it is a short stay. Mercury is going to station on the 4th of August, and then it's going to backtrack and return to Leo on the 14th of August. So for 21 days, Mercury is going to be in Virgo. And the archetype for that is the pragmatic perfectionist. Remember, um, Mercury is a ruler of Virgo. So returns home at least for 21 days, retreats back into Leo, and then will come back into Virgo for its full transition. But for now, the pragmatic perfectionist emerges, harnessing the ability to analyze, communicate, problem solve with exceptional clarity and precision. So obviously these really big benefits with Merc just raw Merc with no other alignments. Mercury in Virgo is a wonderful thing, right? Uh, able to communicate, problem solve, discern, um, crafting efficient processes. The pragmatic perfectionist aims to refine, optimize, and elevate all that it touches or thinks about. But a uh, may have a tendency towards excessive criticism that might overanalyze, leading to decision paralysis. And now we bring in the in conjunct over to Pluto, and that'll make things more difficult. But I'm going to save that for the next day because we have other things that we need to cover because the next tightest alignment is Sun and Mars with a sextile. And a sextile is known to be more of a positive type of uh, energetic exchange and the resilient nurture 
is fighting to show that he cares. This archetype is characterized by an, by an unwavering commitment to nurturing and protecting emotional connections, even in the face of challenges. They are not only caregivers, but also fierce advocates for the emotional well-being of their loved ones and the preservation of meaningful bonds. And why this is important is because this is going to end up being a critical critical piece of our solution. As you're going to see, it's going to actually go right into our I Ching. So we're going to need this, this sunset sextile Mars, and it's why the I Ching gave it to us. Um, and then just uh, as an intro to the next few days, look how many alignments or look how many planets are being affect by, affected by Pluto right here. You have two over here, two with the trines. You have an opposition and an in, in conjunct. So let's talk about Mercury in conjunct Pluto at 749. It goes exact on Friday, the 26th. This is the disruptive analyst or the natural skeptic. This complex energy combines a keen eye for detail, a drive for perfection, a powerful impulse for transformation and reform. The disruptive analyst possesses the mental acuity to identify flaws and inefficiencies in existing structures and the Plutonian force to challenge the status quo and advocate for radical change. Right. This might feel like a keen analysis and problem-solving skills, the ability to identify areas of transformation and reform, the opportunity to challenge outdated or ineffective systems. But keep in mind, you may have the tendency to get bogged down in the details, losing sight of the big picture, overly critical or perfectionistic attitudes that might hinder progress. Now, there's also Mercury square Mars, and this is quite important because you have two power players with some kind of questionable alignments. You got an in conjunct and a square, and those are two, two of our Scorpio power uh, planets. So this is the, this square to Mars is the dual-minded critic the dual-minded critic encapsulates the struggle to balance thorough, precise thinking with the ability to communicate and act flexibly in the moment. So you have like potential mental exhaustion or verbal conflicts. Um, and this really does synergize with the in conjunct we just talked about before. And that makes sense because Mars and Pluto are both different forms of power. All right, onward we go to Saturday, and we're going to find the moon, because moon is in Taurus in a last quarter alignment. Yeah, it's a T-square. It's uh, it, by this, the definition of last quarter makes it a square over to the sun, so they're both at 5 degrees 32 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the grounded luminary. This energy signature reflects the profound challenges and opportunities of settling into one's earthly foundation with the drive for radiant self-expression. That would be over here with Leo. The grounded luminary must navigate the tensions between stability and change, between the comfort of familiar and the allure of the spotlight. That's the last quarter moon, which is very transient because the moon is fast. Sunday, the 28th. This is about midday. We're just going to go over what's developing here. We've already covered Mercury and Pluto. We've covered Mercury and Mars. Um, one thing to look at here is that Mercury is starting to slow 
And we can do that in relation to Mars because it's typically faster planet, faster moving planet than Mars. But now Mars, is you're going to start to see, appears to be speeding up, but it's not. It's just faster than Mercury because it's starting to slow down until it screeches into a halt in our next surf report to uh, prepare for its retrograde. So I wanted to point that out. Mercury slowing. Then we're going to start to shift over. This is midweek. Look, starting to look at uh, Venus, all things Venus. We have the Venus in conjunct Saturn. That's the Maleficent. And we also have Venus square Uranus. And that one is just beginning. That one is a very profound one that we're going to cover here in the next couple of days. And then we have Mars conjunct Jupiter. That's a huge one that we'll also cover at the last day of our surf report this week. All right, let's move on to Tuesday the 30th, and we have Venus and Uranus. Venus square Uranus is probably the biggest energetic influence right now. So the archetype is shock value sensualist. This creates friction between the desire for loyal, committed love and the need for novel, thrilling experiences. This archetype may attract or seek out shocking, taboo, or unorthodox romantic scenarios as a way to bridge this gap. This is a complex energy that can manifest as provocative displays of affection, sudden shifts in relational dynamics, or a taste for the exotic and the forbidden. may feel a magnetic attractiveness and romantic charisma that you don't normally have, or if you do, goes on a heightened alert, ability to bring excitement and novelty to relationships that have maybe become doldrum or habituated, liberation from stifling romantic norms and expectations. But there might be some difficulty with long-term commitment. Watch out for that. Tendency to create drama or upheaval in relationships. There's kind of like a grenade effect whenever we bring in Uranus. The shock value, sensualist, might look like it's self-sabotage because they say it like it is or just want to shock someone. And uh, with that can turn people away. Not always. Wednesday, the 31st. We have Mars and Jupiter just starting. This is a very important alignment in Gemini. And the archetype is the energized quantum communicator. Because Jupiter in the foreign land of Gemini has to work really hard to be in that culture and in doing so brings really the gifts of both out. And uh, that's kind of the specialty of being in the detriment. Uh, Jupiter, not a, uh, not enjoying their time typically in Gemini, but gets really uh, big benefits out of it. Expands that space, the space of thought and communication. This is a the Mars and Jupiter in Gemini, a force of dynamic intellectualism and expansive communication. This archetype possesses an insatiable appetite for knowledge fueled by the boundless curiosity and quicksilver mental energy of Gemini. The conjunction with Jupiter amplifies this mental drive to cosmic proportions, infusing every thought and conversation with a sense of buoyant optimism and adventurousness. It may feel incredible capacity for learning and processing information quickly, ability to communicate ideas, 
with enthusiasm and optimism, potential for groundbreaking insights and innovative solutions, but you might have a tendency towards like a restlessness, mental restlessness, a difficulty focusing, potential potential for shattering energy and not following through on ideas. But a lot of potential there, and we'll be talking about that in depth next week as well. Here's our surf. I'm sorry. Here's our I Ching. The I Ching has a change line on the first. So it's hexagram three, line one. We get the birth of a new venture or relationship as an entry into the unknown. This hexagram is called the difficulty at the beginning. New things seem to be rushing upon you. Ask for guidance and support. I don't normally include solution comments in the influence, but I underline uh, I underlined this in red because it's a direct match to the solution. So I thought that was interesting. Challenges lie ahead, but they are challenges you can handle. It's important to honor that line one. And it says hesitation and hindrance. It furthers one to remain persevering. It furthers one to appoint helpers. Hmm, just, just note that. Um, we're not looking at solutions yet. So it furthers one to appoint helpers is sort of a solution. It's a behavior. It's a suggestion. But we're concentrating mostly on just the influence. So what is the feeling here? It's a sense of hindrance, sense of hesitation, uncertainty, early struggles or just struggles. Um, a, you might feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of the task at hand. And remember where the moon is in all this. This is there's a part of this. This is pre last quarter, and then part of our week is post last quarter. So it is a slow down period, and so these tasks or these struggles should be decreasing as well, at least in your behavior. But we're going to talk about that later. All right, transition to the solution. But before we do, let's summarize the influence. Here's the influence. The I Ching hex three in line one does well to summarize the astrological influences. Even though Mercury returns home to Virgo, it immediately gets saddled with an inconjunct to Pluto and begins a square to Mars. There is definitely hindrance in the air. This will feel like difficulty communicating inner conflicts, lots of false assumptions, and a whole lot of mental shoulds. The last quarter moon and Taurus will start to energetically slow things down and feel more grounded. At least we have that. And then relational changes or relational challenges are possible with Venus square Uranus. And uh, what's the other uh, archetype for Venus is how we relate to others how we relate, uh, square, Uranus, Uranus being technology. So, yeah, that could be some sort of internet outage. I'm not predicting it, just it could be. Oh, did I? No, I forgot to. Let me do this one more time. Change over there. There you go. There's your, all right, now you can screenshot it. All right. Now to our solution. It's, uh, you put the change line one in, you get eight, holding together. Holding together produces success. High level teamwork is achieved through the right players on the right team. Share a clear goal at the right time. So foster unity. Use cooperation, value each person's contribution, be supportive, communicate openly as best you can with the hardships on Mercury, cultivate loyalty, focus on common goals, maybe prioritize the goals that are common as the highest ones, consider that, 
lead by example, and demonstrate integrity. All right, put this into our conversion chart. I estimated that Mercury is going to be the biggest influence all week. And it is at on Friday in hexagram 59. This is when the exact conjunction happens to Pluto. And that is going to be sidereal Leo as well. So 59 in the rave, line one is the preemptive strike. Kind of love this one. Um, kind of spent some introspective time on this one. The authority and vitality that in understanding purpose and direction can recognize and eliminate barriers before they become impregnable. The power of fertility to impregnate. So before you think this is more like a procreation thing, it's more of suggesting that having a clear sense of purpose and direction gives one the power to identify and remove obstacles before they become too difficult to overcome. In essence, it emphasizes the importance of proactive problem solving and the clarity of goals in your achieving success. So we're going to incorporate that in our solution, which is now. All right, here it is. We have the I Ching holding together. This is uh, Red, uh, Red Rover, Red Rover, who played that as a kid. Do they still have that for the young viewers? Is Red Rover still a thing? Um, but Red Rover is not the solution, okay? It's fun, but it's not the solution. It's holding together. And that's a game where you had literally had to hold hands with your partner and prevent the person that you called over, Red Rover, Red Rover, bring Ben right over, and ho hopefully you can't, you don't let Ben break your arms. If you do, then you lose your players. Proactive problem solving is from the Rave Mandala. We have Sidereo Leo, and we have the Last Quarter Moon. Now, this sort of looks contradictory. Last Quarter Moon is the drawing down. Sidereo Leo implies be bold and move up. So we need to sort that out. There's a definite contradiction generated by the slowing last quarter moon versus the speedy and hasty sidereal Leo. By Saturday the 27th, you should... <laughs> See the shoulds already? Did you catch that? Should. You should be finishing up with your tropical cancer lunar goals. So use the Leo's gift of boldly and confidently pushing those to completion. But henceforth, after the 27th, begin to relax, rejuvenate, and unwind as the major goal. But keep in mind that the rave warns about the importance of proactive problem solving. This still applies even during the rest and recoup period. Okay, so even though you're resting doesn't mean that you're not allowed to do anything. Um, just make the primary goal rest and recoup. And then when a item comes up that you can't ignore, this is the challenges to Mercury will not be ignored. So when you feel them, clarify your purpose, review your values, take out the barrier boldly, do it in a manner associated with Leo. Confidence, profound yang, not holding back, and get it done. But I wouldn't take on big, long projects. That's what I wouldn't do this week. I Ching 8 suggests to exponentially increase your effectiveness, hold together with like-minded people. Rely on your tribe. Ask for help as needed. Spend time with the tribe, holding together. Holding together doesn't mean you have to be doing something together. As we discussed, I think the last time around this, we had some social time in a last quarter moon set or setting 
which means you just be with the group, be with your tribe. All right, ready for the plant of the week? This one I honestly never tried, but I'm looking forward to it. The North American skullcap is a readily available herb that is often used to relax the mind and body. Sorry. Classed as a nervine herb, skullcap is a restorative herb to the nervous system, especially if there is hysteria, panic attacks, PTSD, adrenal fatigue, can aid in grounding, cooling the body, insomnia, creating new pathways. Uh, Let's see here. Mercury in Virgo asks us to transmute and embody without overthinking necessary initiations. Use skullcap to release thoughts that don't serve and break the patterns, including unwanted behavior or addictions, negative thought loops, PTSD, grief, fear, offers high-level spiritual protection during the process and release of the above. As a mental health professional myself, um, I need to caution you that I'm not offering you uh, medical advice or Psychological, I can't guarantee that these things are going to help with your mental health issues. But I do encourage you to research these on your own. And if you think it's worth um, trying those, make sure you check those out with your medical provider and have their oversight. Pluto is the higher octave of Mars and correlates to the Phoenix aspect of the Scorpio archetype. Um, Use this penetrating inner vision and intuition that Skullcap can enhance and clarify to release elements of control and transform limiting thoughts and patterns. Seek like-minded community that reinforces and supports this work. This is perfect in alignment. Everything that we talked about today is correlated so nicely. We even have the leadership window uh, tapped into with today's plant. as the leadership qualities and confidence to be the change. This is crafted by Sean Elizabeth Nelson. And thank you, Sean, for your continued support of our surfers. Sean is a surfer herself, and she loves what she does. So thank you, and thank you, uh, all of you wonderful surfers out there. So like I said, Challenge is ahead, but here's how you handle it. And the secret to life is in your reactions. So go out, be the change you want to see in the world. Um, laugh a lot, but don't make it an escape, okay? Laugh a lot at the circus that's out there. How about that? All right, everybody, be well. Make sure you look through the comments and pick the one that you like the most, all right? Maybe even drop one of your own comments down. And it really does help the channel. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week.